Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, before I turn it over to my uh, NSC colleague here, I want to say one thing at the top. We have grave concerns with the passage of the Anti-Homosexuality Act, AHA, by the Parliament of Uganda yesterday, and increasing violence targeting LGBTQI plus persons. If the AHA is signed into law and enacted, it would impinge upon universal human rights, jeopardize progress in the fight against HIV AIDS, deter tourism and invest in Uganda and damage Uganda's international reputation. The bill is one of the most extreme anti-LGBTQI plus laws in the world. Human rights are universal. No one should be attacked, imprisoned, or killed simply because of who they are or whom they love. And with that, my colleague, John Kirby is here to offer a preview of the President's upcoming trip to Canada. As you know, the President will be heading to Canada tomorrow and answering any lingering questions about President uh, Putin and President Xi's meeting uh, this week in Moscow. Admiral? I'm sure there's no lingering questions about that. Um, so as Kareen said, I just want to give you all a, a little bit of a preview here of the President's uh, trip up to uh, to Ottawa. He does leave tomorrow afternoon. It's quite a packed schedule for a short trip. They, uh, they, once, they're, uh, once they arrive, uh, they'll be greeted uh, by the Governor General of Canada, Mary Simon. Later uh, tomorrow evening, the President and the First Lady will join Prime Minister Trudeau and Mrs. Trudeau for an intimate gathering at their residence. And on Friday, the President will participate in a bilateral meeting, of course, with Prime Minister Trudeau and his team. Uh, during which he will absolutely uh, reaffirm the United States' enduring commitment to this U.S.-Canada partnership. The uh, President will then follow in the tradition of previous presidents uh, who visit Canada and address Canada's parliament. In his remarks, the President will underscore how the U.S.-Canada partnership benefits not only our two countries but the entire world, and that by working together, we can address some of the biggest challenges we face. President Biden and Prime Minister Trudeau will then participate in a press conference. Later tomorrow, or Friday evening, the President and First Lady will attend a gala dinner at the Canadian Aviation and Space Museum. Now, in addition to joining the President for those events, the First Lady will continue to build on her friendship with Mrs. Sophie Trudeau and participate in a spousal program that's focused on our shared cultural connections and, of course, empowering young people. This is a meaningful visit. Canada is one of the United States' closest allies and friends and has been now for more than 150 years. This will be the first true in-person bilateral meeting between the two leaders in Canada since 2009. In the first year of this administration, we focused on rebuilding that bilateral relationship. In the second year, we focused on following through on our commitments, including prioritizing orderly and safe migration through regular pathways and enhancing collaboration to address the synthetic opioid crisis. And now, heading into the third, this visit is about taking stock of what we've done, where we are, and, uh, and what we need to prioritize uh, for, uh, for the future. We're going to talk about our two democracies stepping up to meet the challenges of our time. That includes taking concrete steps to increase defense spending, driving a global race to the top on clean energy, and building prosperous and inclusive economies. Uh, that's continuing to take bold action. To, that's also continuing to take bold action to combat climate change. Climate change, promote inclusive economic growth and good jobs, strengthen our democracies, supporting efforts for stability in Haiti, and continuing, of course, to support Ukraine. President Biden will also promote our shared domestic and foreign policy goals, including by highlighting the mutual benefits of the Inflation Reduction Act, the CHIPS and Science Act, the U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement for promoting prosperity and clean energy. Uh, and, of course, uh, the first call President Biden made to a foreign leader as President of the United States was to Prime Minister Trudeau, highlighting the strategic importance of this uh, incredible relationship. Since then, the two leaders have spoken multiple times and also met in person a number of times, and we're looking forward to continuing to work with Canada to strengthen uh, economic ties, uh, to promote inclusive growth, to address, as I said, climate change, enhance North America's competitiveness, and strengthen our defense through both NATO and through NORAD. And with that, we'll take some questions. Um, hey, John. So I, I wanted to ask you about uh, the Russian foreign minister's comments today uh, about Britain's plans to supply Ukraine with uranium ammunition. 
uh, and Lavrov had said that's a step towards significant escalation. Um, does the Biden administration have any concern about the Brits sharing such ammo? Well, certainly we would uh, let the, the, the UK speak for itself in terms of uh, what sovereign decisions they're going to make about uh, providing ammunition. But, I mean, make no mistake, I mean, this, this is yet another straw man through which the Russians are driving a stake. Uh, this kind of uh, ammunition is uh, uh, fairly commonplace, been in use for, for decades. I think what's really going on here is uh, Russia just doesn't want Ukraine to uh, continue to t take out its tanks and and, uh, um, and render them inoperative. Um, and if that's really the concern, if the Russians are very concerned about uh, their tanks uh, staying fully operational, they can just take them across the border back into Russia and take them out of Ukraine. They don't belong there in the first place. That's, that would be my recommendation if they're concerned about threats to their tanks. And, and now that the, the meeting is behind us, um, is there any change in the U.S. assessment on China's weighing of sending weaponry to Moscow? No change. No change. Thank you so much. Um, on the topic of Ukraine, what will President Biden's message be to the Prime Minister about sustaining support for Ukraine? And are there any concerns, given the debate that we are seeing here in Congress, uh, that support will start to wane on the world stage? You know, I don't think the President believes Prime Minister Trudeau needs to have a message delivered on supporting Ukraine. I mean, the uh, Canadians have been right there with us since the very beginning. And part of this uh, Ukraine contact group, they have uh, given uh, uh, millions of dollars in security assistance as well as humanitarian and even financial assistance, uh, Kristen. So they have stepped up uh, in a big way. We're grateful for that support. Pre Prime Minister Trudeau doesn't need any, any, any messages from us on, on that. And as for the public support, um, uh, again, we uh, are very grateful for the bicameral and the bipartisan support that we're getting on Capitol Hill. And you can see that continue, even with the House of Representatives now in Republican hands, the, the House leadership has been consistent in wanting to continue to support uh, Ukraine. Uh, we're grateful for that, and uh, we fully expect that that will continue. If I could follow up with you on the news yesterday that the U.S. is accelerating the timeline for sending Abrams tanks to Ukraine. Um, can you talk about that decision? And also, are there any renewed discussions about potentially sending Ukraine the F-16 fighter jets that they've been asking? No change to our no change to our uh, our uh, uh, our policy on fighter jets at this time. Nothing to speak to. Um, I think the Pentagon laid out in more detail yesterday the decision making on the the Abrams tanks. Um, we have said from the very beginning. Heck, we've been saying this since the. War began. That, you know, we know uh, uh, there's a sense of urgency we all 